Soil School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by The Mosaic Company. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to a new season of The Soil School. Today, we're going to dig into phosphorus production. On this episode, we'll travel to Florida to Mosaic's Fort Lonesome Phosphorus Mining location to learn what it takes to mine and process the matrix. That's the raw form of phosphorus that lies just below the soil surface at the Florida mine site. We'll then visit Mosaic's New Wales Manufacturing Facility. That's where the processing and refining takes place. From there, we'll travel to the company's integrated operations center, where some incredible technology allows employees to run mining operations from a central location. We'll wrap things up with a look at reclamation and the tremendous efforts it takes to restore mining locations to their natural habitat. The journey begins with my conversation with Aaron Flint, Mosaic's senior manager for Florida mining operations at the Fort Lonesome Dragline. So Aaron, let's talk about the mining process. My sense is it all starts with prospecting, right? Sure, yeah, it starts with prospecting. We'll actually come into a, a prospective area and we'll prospect to take a look and understand the geology, how much overburden, how much matrix we have, what the quality is. Uh, assuming we deem an area to be uh, economically you know, feasible for us to mine, we'll come in. Uh, we'll actually have to build a series of what's referred to as ditches and berms or BMPs. Uh, and that'll surround the entire footprint of the, the future mining area. And that really ensures that we mitigate any potential offsite impacts to those surrounding properties. And then you've got to get to work with this drag line, right? So yeah, then we'll come in, we'll actually clear and grub the ground, and we'll prep it for, for the drag line activities themselves. Uh, once we come in with the drag line, we'll actually strip off all the overburden, uh, cast that overburden to the side in an effort to get to the actual matrix, which is really the phosphate ore itself, sand and clay, so it's a three-part material that we're actually mining. Once we get that in the bucket, so to speak, we'll actually put that into what's called a well. Um, that well uh, then basically feeds a series of pumps that pump it all the way back to our beneficiation plant for processing. Tell me a little bit more about the drag line, how it works. Uh, it moves slow, but it's powerful and it moves a lot of dirt and a lot of minerals. Yeah, so I mean, all of our drag lines, you know, they were built in the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, they're electrically operated, right? So they run on 7,200 volts AC and then convert it to DC. Um, and really, basically, what they do is they will use that bucket. That's about a 65-yard bucket. They'll actually, you know, dig that material out. Um, it'll basically swing over. You have a, a what's referred to that well will be within a 180-degree swing of it. Usually, about a 90-degree swing. They'll actually take that phosphate over and dump it into the well, and then we pump it. So. Uh, very efficient machines, very large machines. Tell me a little bit about uh, the matrix. Obviously, uh, that overburden you'll push off. What is in the matrix? Yeah, so in the matrix, like I said, it's a three-part material. It's, it's the phosphate ore itself, it's clay and sand. And what happens is when it goes to the plant, the beneficiation plant, it'll first go through the washer. In the washer, the process is actually focused on removing clays. Uh, once those clays are removed, those clays are then pumped to uh, embankments that we refer to as clay settling areas. Uh, that clay will then, as the name suggests, settle in those areas. What you have left is then the sand and the phosphate ore itself. Uh, it'll then go through a sizing, sizing process, uh, and it's sized based on fraction. Um, once it goes through sizing, it then goes to a two-part flotation process. We will utilize reagents that will actually, their chemical, make, you know, their makeup is that they'll actually adhere to, uh, in one part of the flotation process, they'll adhere to the phosphate particle, and the other part, they'll adhere to the sand particle. And the idea is that we want to recover as much of that phosphate ore as possible. Talk about, I guess, the movement of the ore, um, you know, and, and, and having to transport it yeah. to, that, to the beneficiation plant. Yeah, so when it's put into the well, uh, we use high pressure water, generally 280 PSI to 320 PSI. Uh, we'll use that, we'll manipulate it, we'll beat that material up. We want to take it from a, maybe a chunky, rocky kind of consistency to more of like a milkshake. Uh, and that, that milkshake, what we refer to as matrix, is then pumped. Uh, our, our pumping systems vary. Right now, a lot of our pumping systems are anywhere from about 15 to 18 miles long. On average, you have one lift pump per mile. Um, so it's a lot of energy, and ideally we want to maintain a certain uh, density or, or, you know, we don't want to pump water. That's very inefficient. We want to pump a certain amount, but you can't, you can't have too high solids because then you can choke the line down. So on average, you're anywhere between 30 to 40% solids is what we're pumping down the matrix lines. 
Next up, Mosaic Senior Operations Manager James Briscoe shares how the mine phosphorus is piped and pumped up to 50 miles to the company's New Wales manufacturing facility where it's processed into fertilizer products destined for farm fields. We also get to see technicians operate and control the entire mining process remotely from the company's Fishhawk Integrated Operations Center. So James, tell us how you get that phosphate ore from Fort Lonesome, the drag line there, you know, to a production facility like New Wales. You know, tell us about the pumping stations and, and the, the amazing technology that you use remotely to move it. Yes, sir. Yeah. So ultimately, the drag line puts the matrix or the phosphate ore, sand, and tellings mixture into a pit, and then we slurry that material up um, using technology to operate those pit guns and pumping systems remotely from 30 to 50 miles away from actually where the drag lines are. And so we'll slurry that up, pump it through a series of pumps and piping to our beneficiation process. And in that beneficiation process, we separate the clay and the sand from the phosphate and then ultimately have a phosphate rock process that we use later to make fertilizer and animal feed products. Mm. Tell me about technology. Uh, you've got technicians who are controlling the process from 50 miles away. Yes, sir. So yeah, we have a, a fiber link backbone that allows us to do that to where we can run 2,000 horsepower pumps and motors and complete pumping systems, pit guns, all remotely using that technology. We have a series of instrumentation to where we can see amps, pressure, flows, everything on that line and truly monitor the health of that line using that instrumentation and high definition camera systems. And, and like I said earlier, do that all from a far distance. Technology that 16 years ago when I started with the company never dreamed that we would get to that point for sure. Hey, let's talk about, you know, uh, once that material gets to New Wales, you know, take us through the process of, uh, that converts it, you know, to the phosphate products map and depth the farmers, you know, ultimately use on their fields. Yeah, so ultimately that rock, when we pull it out of the, the ground and process it through the beneficiation plant, is not water soluble. So we take sulfur and we make sulfuric acid in order to mix with that rock, and that allows us to make a phosphoric acid product. At phosphoric acid, we then add ammonia and we'll granulate it um, and then turn that into a finished good DAF map or animal feed product or micro essential product. Um, during that process, we'll make our own power as well. We have um, cogeneration within our, our processes where we'll make an environmentally friendly way of making power production um, and then use that power back in our processes uh, as well. James, how much uh, phosphate products uh, do you make at a plant like New Wales, and you know how do you move it to market? Yeah, so ultimately at New Wales, we'll make eight to ten thousand tons of finished good DAP, MAP, micros, or animal feeds per day, um, and then we'll ship that through a, a series of very impressive shipping units to where we'll have automated processes of reclaimers that automatically blend our products and load rail cars, trucks out of our facility, New Wells, or other facilities such as Bartow or Riverview. And some of that will go to the port and much of that will go up country into North America as well. For our final stop, we get to visit a 1,600 acre former mining site that operated from the 1990s to 2004. It's now been reclaimed with its natural habitat restored, including 500 acres of wetland. Here, Mosaic Crop Nutrition Lead Tristan Beyer looks at what happens after the phosphorus has been extracted from the mining site. Tristan, it takes a tremendous amount of time, energy, work, and commitment to reclaim a, a mine this size. What do you see when you walk around here? Well, what I see when I look around here is you know, natural pristine habitat that's been restored back to its native state. You can see behind me you know, these pines, for example. Each one of these were you know, hand planted from about one gallon pots. And when we look at the landscape that originated here, uh, we try to mimic that exact uh, habitat that we're trying to return it back to. And even down to the natural shrubs that you see, uh, many of these are hand selected to mimic those natural habitats. So it's the right habitat for a natural 
uh, native uh, organisms and different uh, reptiles like the, the gopher tortoise or a number of different uh, endangered species that can thrive in these habitats after we go through. It's an amazing story here. I was talking to one of the ecologists. Uh, every foot of this place was mapped before the mining started. Uh, muck was taken away, brought back years later after the mining was complete. Uh, an amazing process and commitment. For sure. Like when you look at the, the the planning that goes in, into uh, mining a, a parcel. It happens years, if not decades, in advance. Whether it's uh, identifying the landscape and the, the uses for the different habitats, uh, to trying to reconfigure the grounds so the, the hydrology is the exact same or better. We try to say that we, if there's a wetland, every acre for acre we're, we're storing to that if not better than what the ground was to, to begin with. And I think it puts in great confidence that when we're mining phosphorus in North America that we are good stewards of the ground and uh, can create uh, and leave the habitat better than what we, we started with. Tryson, an amazing tour here today watching, you know, the process from mining to reclamation. When you talk to farmers, what would you like to see them take away from, from this video? I think there's a couple takeaways. One is when we go in and start the mining process that the thought and planning starts years in advance. And part of that's to be uh, bringing the best products to market to be able to mine the ore efficiently and to be able to uh, make the phosphorus fertilizers that's gonna be most plant available to the crops. When you look at products like microessentials and we reformulate it, it's amazing how much we can get into the plants compared to the natural phosphate ore that we're mining that we call the, the matrix that's originally not plant available. And add, actually, as, as time has evolved, our phosphorus fertilizers continue to improve in plant availability. And even once we get them into the field and, and apply for the crop to take them up, you know, we can't forget what's happening back here uh, at the original mining operations. Whether it's uh, you know mining and uh, manufacturing and pumping that, the, the, we'll call it the, the reclaimed sands back to the original sites here uh, where we're retransforming the landscape in a way that can better the, the local communities uh, as well as the, the environment for, for years to come.